Hello, my name is Claire and I am here to talk to you a little bit today about starting school, some of the stress that can go along with that, and some mindfulness techniques that sometimes can be helpful to incorporate into our life to help manage stress. So again, I'm Claire Giblin. I am a second year student here at CIIS, so welcome. And I am pursuing my master's in integrative health studies and wellness coaching. In our program, we study wellness from a whole person, individualized approach, encouraging personal autonomy and incorporating integrative tools like mindfulness into our coaching sessions. So when we think about starting school, it can be a lot as we are adding schoolwork to probably already a full schedule and trying to balance things like family, friends, work, uh, enjoying your life and having some self-care time with also the new requirements of tests and homework and giving presentations and meeting new people and not wanting to just check boxes, but to also want to incorporate and integrate all of this information into your life. So as fun and exciting as all of it is, it can also add some stress and some overwhelm to our life. And in coaching, we use this tool here, our wellness wheel, um, that represents our well-being in a holistic manner. And it's a nice anchoring tool and a nice way of visual to think about all these different parts of our life that incorporate our wellness. So if we look at our, well, our wheel here, excuse me, you'll see we have things like occupation, exercise, intellect, Spiritual, spirituality and belonging. So a lot of different pieces that all are important in our well-being. You'll also see we have a scale here from one to 10 in each of these parts. So when working with clients, I typically ask them to look at this wheel and then rate where they feel like they are on that scale. And it's not about a right or wrong or anything like that. It's really to say, okay, maybe I am like rocking it in intellect and I feel like I'm at a 10 and my schoolwork is really, really on point. But because of that, my social relationships are maybe at a three because I haven't had the time to see my friends, see my family, um, have that one-on-one -on -one time. And so maybe that's something to try and find a little bit of balance on. So then maybe we would make some goals to work around that. So that's our wellness wheel. And when we think about stress and overwhelm in school, it can be really easy to get overwhelmed trying to find the balance that works for you when you're thinking about all these different aspects of your life. So, I like to start with also what's happening in the body when we do feel stressed. It can be another nice anchoring point. And when we feel stressed, it's typically our sympathetic nervous system is kicked into gear. So that is our fight, flight, or freeze, and a big release of energy from our body. Now, this um, is really helpful in a lot of scenarios and has been really helpful in the evolution of humans. Um, when you think about stumbling upon a tiger, perhaps, your sympathetic nervous system is really important. It also prepares the body for the three E's, we like to say. So that is emergency, exercise, and excitement. So think about not just stumbling upon that tiger, which we don't have that much anymore, but also things like a big exam or uh, a big interview, or maybe just sitting in traffic also. So, when our sympathetic nervous system kicks into gear, our pupils dilate, our heart rate increases, our digestive system slows down, sweat glands activate, all those bodily symptoms that a lot of us um, do experience when we're feeling nervous or stressed or excited. So the other side of that is our parasympathetic nervous system. That is our rest and digest mode. So it's when the body is returning to homeostasis, some stability, a little more balance, and the body is conserving energy and replenishes nutrients as we rest. So the parasympathetic nervous system is also really important for our body to have that time to 
be able to rest and digest. And if we're always in our sympathetic nervous system, that's when things like chronic stress can start to take a toll on our body and our overall health. And in our modern world, when we do have so many different responsibilities, it can be that our sympathetic nervous system is kind of working in overdrive. So trying to tap into that parasympathetic nervous system is a really important piece of being able to reduce some of that stress in our life and just be a little bit calmer in all the different things we have going on in our life. So mindfulness can be a really great tool to help reduce some of that stress. And the goal of mindfulness is to bring us into the present moment, typically using a focal point, such as our breath. And when we are stressed, many times we're thinking in the future or the past and our mind is whirling in these different places. So mindfulness practices help quiet that noise a little bit and bring us into the present. If we think of stress like a bathtub, and if we keep putting more water into that bathtub without taking any out, it's eventually going to overflow. And that's when we're not going to feel very, very good if you think about that as in terms of chronic stress. So things like mindfulness practices can help take some of that water out of that bathtub and keep us more at a, a nice, stable balance in our lives. And similar to building strength in our bodies, it, all, it takes time to practice and build strength in our mind. So that means that you're probably not going to go and pick up a, you know, 200 pound dumbbell to do some deadlifts if you've never lifted weights before. Similarly, you might not sit for an hour meditation if that's something you've never done before. So all these things can take practice and time, um, but there are a number of great tools that are available in the mindfulness realm, and I'll just touch on a few of them here. Uh, meditation, movement, and breathing techniques. So meditation can look like a seated meditation, um, a guided or an unguided, using a visualization. Movement can be great for people who are comfortable sitting down or maybe you have trouble quieting your mind and just a, a, by just sitting down. So using things like a walking meditation or yoga or being in nature can help get that mon, mind body connection that can be very helpful in, in calming us and um, centering us as well. And breathing techniques in yoga known as pranayama, diaphragmatic breathing is another way to look at it. So instead of only breathing in our chest, those deep, stressful breaths that many of us, I think, can relate to. It's focusing more on your diaphragm and your belly and really expanding through using all of your lungs it can be really helpful in tapping into that rest and digest. So what are the benefits of some mindfulness practices? Because it's great to think about right now, right here, as we try and de-stress, but... Um, they can help us in other parts of our life too, not just in a 10-minute seated meditation. So mindfulness practices can bring increased resiliency and focus, again, outside of your practice, not just during it. And it can also help you gain a new perspective on stressful situations, build skills to manage your stress, increase self-awareness, helps you, again, focus on the present, reduces negative emotions, increases imagination and creativity, increasing patience and tolerance. So we can see there's a lot of potential benefits to bringing some of these practices into our lives. So that's great. <laughs> Having all these things and learning about the benefits of these is awesome. But another reality in all this is that creating new habits can be challenging and especially when you already have a full plate. So if you are feeling like you're scheduled all day long, you might be like, yeah, I, the hour of the gym is not gonna happen. It's not in, not in the cards. And in health coaching, we really like to focus on taking small steps and focusing on one change at a time. And this helps avoid burnout on habit change 
it also gives us a little bit of momentum as we start to see ourselves adapt to some of these habits. BJ Fogg is a researcher at Stanford University, and he has a program called Tiny Steps, which is, I think, a great representation of this. And his theory is that in order to create a new habit, we can start by using a habit we already have, such as brushing our teeth, and then pair that habit with a new small tiny habit, and then celebrate that we just did something new. So he gives an example in one of his TED Talks of after you brush your teeth, you floss one tooth, just the one, no, nothing else. And then you look in the mirror and go, woohoo, did it. Simple as that. And with that momentum, maybe the next day you do two teeth, three teeth, until by the end of the month you have created a new habit and you're, you know, getting all those pearly whites nice and flossed. So again, tiny steps building on can help build into larger changes in our life. And getting support is another great way to help incorporate some of these tools into our lives. So I'll give a nice plug here for our wellness center at CIIS. And wellness coaching is available to students. And we can work with you on things like nutrition, stress, exercise, mindfulness, balance, that work-life balance especially can be a really helpful thing to get some support on, talk through challenges, uh, just have a, a, a new perspective as well as you're trying to bring change into your life. And other resources that are available are meditation apps. There are a bunch of them out there these days. I have used the Headspace, the Calm app, and Insight Timer, and I find them all really user-friendly. They have great free options. Different breathing techniques. If you Googled breathing techniques, you would find all sorts of things. I'm Two that have caught my eye are uh, the three by three method, and that is using your breath and something physical in the room to bring a present moment, and you know, it takes about 30 seconds to do. And the 7-Eleven is a, a breathing technique of inhaling for seven, exhaling for 11. And that again helps tap into that parasympathetic nervous system, focuses your breath, focuses your mind a little bit. And uh, there's a number of books, of course, <laughs> about mindfulness and mindfulness practices. Two that I read during my mindfulness class at CIIS are The Upside of Stress, which looks at our mindset around stress and how we can actually use stress to our benefit in certain situations and how shifting our how we think about our stress can uh, be a benefit to us. And Aware, Awake, Alive is a deeper dive if you're interested in meditation and gives a really great outline of why we might meditate, some, um, a map of uh, different meditations you can do. So two really great resources. And of course, the CIS Wellness Center on the first floor on the Mission Street campus. And the Wellness Center offers so many different things during the semester. There's yoga classes, again, there's, um, there's coaching, there's counseling. I know there was acupuncture before. So definitely stop into the Wellness Center and check out what they have to offer as well. So that is about it. I thought we would close with maybe trying out one of these breathing exercises together. So we are going to do, which I mentioned before, the 7-Eleven breath, and then just a, a short focusing meditation. So you can find a nice seat, or if you're standing, feeling uh, grounded beneath your feet, and we're going to inhale for seven and exhale for 11 when we start this. So I will, I'll count it out for you. And but let's start by taking a deep breath in and a deep breath out and either closing your eyes or finding a soft gaze and just feeling into your body at this moment. Feeling your breath, 
expand your body and then contract and relax back down. Take one more inhale and an exhale. And now we'll start the breathing exercise. So inhale for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Inhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Exhale, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You can do this on your own again. A big inhale. And an exhale for eleven. And when you're ready, you can find your own breath again, coming into your natural inhales and exhales. And just take a moment to be in your body again, letting your breath be your focus. If thoughts arise, letting them come and go. and being in the moment right here, right now. And when you're ready, you can open your eyes again and come back to our space here. Thank you all so much for your time. I hope you have a wonderful start to the semester. And remember that the Wellness Center and health coaches were here to support you through this transition. And don't be shy about reaching out um, for some help or some assistance if it speaks to you. Thank you so much.